Today's array question is an indexing question. So basically what we've got is we've got an array um, called AR numbers. And when we click on the button, it's going to ask us to generate a random number from 1 to 100 uh, or 1,000 there, 1,000. And whatever number we select, it will then generate that many random numbers ranging from 1 to 6 and store them in array numbers. So for example, if I gave this a 10, it would generate 10 random numbers from 1 to 6, almost the equivalent of throwing a dice 10 times and recording those values into the array numbers array. What we are going to do is we're going to write the code that's going to take those values and calculate how many times the number 1 was thrown, how many times was the number 2 thrown, and so on. And we're going to store that in the corresponding position in array result. So in other words, if we've got the number ones or the number one position in array result, we'll then store how many ones were thrown in array numbers. The second position in array result will store how many number twos were thrown in array numbers. So to look at it visually, I've drawn a diagram here. Let's say this is the index, so this is the array one to ten, and these are the random numbers that were generated. Now what I need to do in my array, array results is I'm going to go through and count how many ones were counted or how many ones were thrown. So there's a one, there's a one, so we know there are two ones. We can Now we look at number two. So we look, there's two twos. We have a look, there's only one three. There's only one four. There are two fives and you can see there are also two sixes. Basically, a good way to check this is if I add up all the numbers that have been counted, yeah, this should equal the number of numbers that I've got in my array. So I've got 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I've got 10 different numbers from 1 to 6, and I've got 10 elements in my array. So we know that works. So <coughs> let's have a look at how we're going to do this. So the first question is basically doing the calculation of working it out um, and displaying the values in the array result. And then the second part of the question is actually physically displaying the results in a memo control that they've got there. So let's go to the Delphi code. Yeah, you can see we've got array numbers, and it gets a number or some sort of number from 1 to 1,000. And there's an n variable which stores how many elements are in that array. Now, array result, we know it's going to be from 1 to 6, and we know we're going to store values in each and every one of them because we know that they're probably going to be random numbers for any for all of the numbers 1 to 6. Even if there are no numbers generated, it'll still be a, like a zero value. So let's go to the code. We're going to generate the random numbers. The code's already been done for us, but it asks us for a, ran a number, so it asks us, and then it generates the random numbers for us. So luckily they've done that for us. Now I need to go and count all those values in the array numbers and put them in the results or the array results. So I'm going to go through all the elements in the numbers array. So I'm going to have to have a for loop that goes from 1 to n because we know that there are n elements in the array. I've got an r variable already and I've, I'm not, although I've used it for this array, it's finished using it for that array so I can reuse it over here. If you're not too sure, you can always just create another looping variable. So there are lots of ways of doing it. I could do it the very long way and I could go, well, if the array or the array numbers, if the value at position r in the array, if that's equal to a 1, then we can increase the position in the array. So we can go to where in the results array. Well, if it's a 1, we want to increase position 1. Okay, so take whatever's in there and add one to it. Else, if the array numbers value is a two, then we can increase the value in the results array, but only at position two, because we've found one that's at position two. And we can carry around like this for all six numbers. Now, we can do that, and that's quite a long way of doing it. Now, if we've got a situation where we've got like a thousand numbers, they'll be counting all the numbers from one to a thousand. This can be quite tedious. But I want you to notice here, do you notice that the position that we're looking for, so the position here, is actually the position that we're looking for over there. Okay, so if I find a one, if the answer is a one, I actually just want to increase position one in the array. Same here, if the if the value in array numbers is a 2, then I just want to increase position 2 in the array. 
So I could simplify all this code by simply saying, you know what, I don't even need to check which one it is. I just need to increase my array results at position or well, what is the answer in the numbers array. So I take the numbers array and increase that position. Okay, so if i is a 1, so it goes to position 1 in the numbers array and that's a 5, it will increase array results at position 5, which is what I want. Because array results only has from 1 to 6. So it's going to keep going through and increasing each relative position for me. So that's what it's doing over there. And that should work. Only thing I should be aware of is because I'm increasing this value, it's going to take whatever's in there and add 1 to it. But how does it know what the initial value is from the from the very beginning? So the thing to remember with indexing is you actually should always initialize your array. And we are going to initialize my array results because we need to give it some sort of starting value. So when it increases one of the values in it, it's got something you start with. So we know there are already one there are only six positions in that array, so I can go from one to six. Do. And all I'm doing is saying array results position i is equal to zero. Just set them all to zero. It's like initializing every single position in that array to zero. And then we run it. And then that should add up all the numbers and put them into array results. Now that's not going to do anything. That's generating them and adding them up. Now we need to display the results. And if we go to question 1.2, it asks us to display as shown in the diagram. So we want the number one and how many ones were thrown. Number two and how many twos were thrown. So we're basically looking at some sort of looping variable, so display results, let's go there. They clear the memo, there's an R variable, so let's go. Now we're only displaying the stuff that's in the results array, so I don't want anything to do with the numbers array. So I don't need to worry to go from 1 to N. I need to go from 1 to 6, because I'm only dealing with the results array. And what I'm doing is I'm saying memo1, this is called memo1, yes, it looks like it's memo1, dot lines, dot add. Now the first thing I'm adding is I'm adding a, a variable that's going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, that sounds like my looping variable, which is position r. So I'm going to display r. But remember, r is an integer, and this is a string that needs to go in here. So I'm going to go from int to string r. Okay. Once that's done, then there's looks like it's some sort of tab that needs to be put in. So I'm going to add a tab, so that's a hash 9. And then last but not least, I need to put the value that's in the results arrays at position 1, at position 2, or in this case, at position R. So, array results, position R. But remember, array results, position R is an integer, so we must convert from an int to a string. And if we run it, let's see if there are any errors first. Well, there's one error there. What seems to be the error there? Underclear array results. Let's have a look. Uh, I've been using uh, this array result and not array results, so let me just go change that. It's a little mistake, mistake, so take that away. So anytime I say ARR results, I must change to result. So let's have a look. Seems to work there. We generate the random numbers. Okay, I want to put in 10 numbers. Just take note, these 10 numbers might be different to the ones that I've got in the little note that I made here because obviously it's randomly generated. So I'm going to display the results, and we can check. There's a 3, a 3, a 2, a 1, a 1, and that adds up to 10. So therefore, there are 10 randomly generated numbers. If I generate another 10, let's make it 20 generated numbers, then you'll see there's a 4 and a 6, a 3, a 4, and a 3. And if I add that together, that's 10, that's 10. There we go. We've got 20 randomly generated numbers. So, there we go. We finished the question, and that seems to deliver the correct results.